Hello everyone and welcome to our house. I'm your host Chris Will joined again by our favorite Matthew Schwamm. But, but, but look who's back everyone. Ethan Silverman is back. How you doing my friend? I'm great. Very excited to be back. I love this place and I fun fact actually guys um, while I was at camp I showed the show to my campers and they absolutely loved it all for like three days three or four days they just kept constantly saying Chris Will Chris Will not much you Matthew because like you weren't the host so they didn't really care much about you but they loved Chris Will hey, as long as they get those likes and subscribes going I'm not complaining exactly shout out to Ethan's campers Matthew Schwalm of course we love you here at our house don't worry about that we got lots to discuss lots of fun stuff I look forward to hearing your opinions so sit back relax and welcome to our house In a huddle, you know they in trouble, we bustin' they bubble. I know that we playin' a game, but this gon' get real and turn in the scuffles. The way I'm gon' touch you, every tackle I make gon' turn in the fumble. They turnin' over the ball, my defense is lying, make sure that I score. Now all you gon' hear is a roar. The crowd is in all. What did you think was gon' happen? I don't know what you thought. You see, this is more than a sport. You made a mistake, you walked in the door. This come with a cost, you taking a loss. Let me remind you where you are. This is our house. This is our house. All right, everyone, so it's Friday here at our house, and you know, we keep it casual, so we all decided to bring some jerseys today. I brought my Christian Pulisic jersey from Dortmund. He transferred to Chelsea this year. The man's been going off. He's up for some awards. So, Ethan, what you got? All right, I got the Heat Vice, um, I think, what is it, Sunset or Rise or something like that, but it's Dwayne Wade. Can't go wrong with the legend. Such Love him. Jersey. Always got a rep. Such a clean jersey. Oh, me. Uh, I got <laughs> I got a throwback Marlins. I'm going to have to stand up so you guys see it. Uh, and it's real throwback. We got Hanley Ramirez on here. Uh, Hanley Ramirez used to be like my favorite, my favorite baseball player when I was a younger kid. And I completely forgot I had this in the closet. I'm so glad I found it. And here he is. Throwback Marlins, and the Marlins are on a hot little surge right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking all of it. Yeah, Marlins are off to probably their best start ever right now. So there's a lot happening in sports right now. We're going to go right into rapid fire. So first off, the Heat played the other day against the Milwaukee Bucks, and you know, it started out good. Um, it was the first game that they didn't have Dragic or Jimmy Butler but they blew a big lead, um, and a lot of people are a bit concerned right now. I actually heard some disrespect on first take this morning that they were saying, oh, the Milwaukee Bucks aren't scared of the Heat. People talk about how they're scared of the Heat, but they aren't scared. Are you guys concerned for the Heat, and what went wrong last night? So blowing a big lead like that is bad. Don't get me wrong. But then again, like Chris, you said, they're missing... Uh, Goran Dragic and Jimmy Butler, two of the biggest le leaders and two who have the most experience in big games like that. And the Heat are a very young team and they lack the experience and, and they lack the experience in the fact that uh, when it's in a big game like that, they don't know how to close. And yes, it's important to close, but right now we don't need to focus on this because it's still the regular season and the playoffs are coming up, that's when we need to close. That's when we need our big players to step up. And, and again, it would be a completely different game if Jimmy Butler and Goran Dragic played. So right now, Chris, I am not concerned about the Heat. I think they, they will do very well in the playoffs. Well, yeah, um, I think actually um, for me, like I know the Heat are notorious for getting a great lead in the first half and then in the second half, completely falling apart and making it a ball game again. Now, sometimes they'll escape and win, but other times you see them and they don't win. And I think this for this season, it was like one of the first major ones, I think, that Miami had this season. So I definitely think it was a punch in the stomach. Um, but yeah, things to remember. They didn't have Jimmy Butler. They didn't have Goran Dragic, two of the biggest players on that team. Um, so clearly that was a big loss in the lineup for last night. However, they did, they were able to build the 24 point lead without him, and that says something. But the part that also says something on the on the other side is that they couldn't finish without him. And that is a huge thing for them. They are still young, they are still learning how to mature, but um, they they need to learn how to close regardless. I think 
Um, even without Jimmy Butler and Goran Dragic, they, that is something that Miami should be able to capitalize on a 24-point lead. Yeah, honestly, get that stuff out of here about the Bucks aren't scared of the Miami Heat. They built a 20-plus point lead without their two veterans. So get that stuff out of here. Bam Adebayo is going to lock up Giannis if they face him in the playoffs. I have absolutely no doubt. So next up, the college football preseason coaches poll went out, and uh, Clemson came out number one. Me and Ethan's Gators came at number eight. So, Schwam, where were you, where were your Knowles on that list? Well, Chris, well, I think uh, FSC is going to be off 56. that list for uh, quite a few years, but... We're coming back. I'm not losing faith, you know. Go Knowles. Coming back right, when we're so, 75, right, Sean? Go Knowles. Go Knowles. That's my comment. That's my comment. <laughs> yeah. So Clemson was number one. Uh, the reigning champs, LSU, were at number five. So who do you think has the best chance of knocking off Clemson from that number one spot? I personally think right now the only team that can knock off Clemson is Ohio State. Uh, led by Justin Fields, I think that team – is a powerhouse in offense, powerhouse in defense, and I think they have the best chance to beat um, Clemson. And I think it's a little hate that they're that they're putting UF at number eight and uh, ranked lower than LSU because right now LSU, they're not as good as they were last year. Joe Burrow was the heart and soul of that team. I personally don't think they'll do that well. And I think Florida, despite their tough season and schedule, I think they'll finish higher. And Georgia. Yeah, whatever. We'll talk about that later. But right now, I don't know if we're getting to this later in the segment in this um, show. But I just want to say this now: with all the players opting out and all the player unions, and with everything that's going on with the coronavirus, right now is very hard for me to see that there will be actual games played this season. We don't have to go into it. I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, yeah, I think um, Ohio State is the team to take uh, Clemson if there is one. I think, but honestly, I think uh, it's Clemson seasons to lo- uh, Clemson season to lose. Really, Trevor Lawrence is gonna. I feel like is gonna come into this season uh, as a great. He's gonna go down for sure with another Heisman uh, candidate, and um, the man is just absolutely insane. Trevor Lawrence is an extremely fierce competitor, uh, great quarterback, and. I think Ohio State is a really uh, consistent team. So with the um, leader of Justin Fields, I think that Ohio State has gr- enormous potential, and I think they are the team that would be able to stop Clemson. Yeah, Ohio State's definitely a team to look out for. So next up, we are going to get to players opting out. A lot of notable players, both within the college ranks, within the NFL ranks, are opting out. So my question for you guys is, what difference does it make for you between an NFL player opting out and a college player opting out to prepare for the NFL. Because obviously NFL players, they're getting paid and they're opting out of getting a paycheck as well. College players aren't getting paid right now. So personally, I, I see more reason for college players to opt out. You aren't getting paid, you aren't getting compensated, but you're getting put into this dangerous situation. So what do you guys think the difference is between the NFL and college? Personally, I don't think that there is a difference because I think health and, and safety trumps money. Um, I think players need to not only concern have a concern about their their own health, but their family, their friends, because it's not like the the NBA where you can just go into a bubble and not see anyone and 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 have no access to the outside world. You're traveling to different schools that could be exposed to different things. The important thing is, is safety and your health. So if you're opting out, those NFL players have so much money that they can survive a season without getting paid. And I think right now the best way for everyone to stay safe and to stay healthy is to opt out. Yeah, listen, I think a lot of people are in agreement that the bottom line here with all this, with all the sports starting up again, I think the bottom line for everyone right now is health. And that has been... Um, uh, a factor in every single sport actually you see players um that sat out of the bubble to stay home for health um so health is the number one concern in any sport right now i do think that it is a hell of a statement um being put together by the nfl and college players um by sitting out because um it can impact them greatly i mean even though the nfl stars make um a lot of money and they have a lot of money sitting out a season won't really affect them too much they are still taking out a paycheck so it is a statement in fact because it's showing that it's more than a game like they're not to be pawned off like 
um, kind of like, oh, we're just going to play football for entertainment kind of stuff. It, they're still human at the end of the day. And as far as college, these kids still have something to prove. They're trying to get to the NFL. So for them to sit out a season and risk a, like a year of eligibility is, is a hell of a statement as well because they're, they're, um, that's, that's something that, that college players look forward to is getting to that draft. So, But, Schwamm, did the NCAA announce that they are removing a year of eligibility? Because right now I think they're giving it back. Yeah, I did hear but, that they're giving it back, but um, they're giving but it back for this coming year. So if you're going to sit out this year, then – but. But regardless, regardless, if they let's like think about it, um, if they contract the virus, they it could and yeah, it goes through their system, whatever. But that means that they also have permanent damage to their body, and it risks them not being able to play football again. So I think a lot of players are opting out to not only protect them now and yeah, maybe losing a year of eligibility, but it also allows them to play in the future. Right, yeah, and I'm in total agreement. I think they should be sitting out. I really don't think sports should have started up again. Um, e- even though the NBA has been very successful, I still think it's a great risk. And um, I, I, like, I'm in complete agreement. But I'm just saying that um, the they, the football, like all the stars, are making some sort of statement here because they're proving that it's never been about the game itself. It's about them, you know. So I think that's something to take into consideration. Yeah, certainly a very serious situation when you involve health risks and future and playing for the big leagues, essentially. But speaking of the NFL, my man, Big Ben, is back on the field, throwing at Heinz Field. So the team didn't have their starting quarterback last year, my Pittsburgh Steelers, but their record was still pretty decent. They ran a solid 500. So... What do you guys expect for a Steelers team that was success- fairly successful last year without a quarterback, but now has their quarterback coming back? What are you guys looking forward to? Listen, the dude is a tank, and he's, he's a literal building, right? And he's not that mobile. Like, yeah, we've seen some clips of him um, move around, but like he, he's a pocket passer. And right now in the NFL, pocket passer, they're starting to get rid of pocket passers. And right now... They also have a lot stronger defensive players and faster defensive players, so you get into the pocket. And I don't know how well he can scramble. Um, Don't get me wrong, I think Big Ben is a great quarterback, and I still think the the Steelers will do well. I just personally don't know how much longer he has in the NFL because, one, he's older, he's had a lot of injuries, and right now I I think he's going to do well, don't get me wrong. It's just this is what I feel. All right, Schwam, please raise my spirits a little bit because I didn't like what I just heard. Yeah, no, no. All right, um, buddy. I was, in fact, going to bring up the um, the injuries and the older age. Ben, Big Ben, unfortunately, is getting older. but um, And the injuries, have he's had quite a few. But um, listen, I think Big Ben's a great quarterback. He always has been. So although he's a pocket passer and although we're seeing a lot more um, scrambling kind of QBs, Big Ben uh, can still sling that football. A lot of people are forgetting that. And... Um, I think I think it'll I think it'll help because you know what if they can do what they did at a 500 record with a second string then I'm sure with a guy with the talent of Big Ben I think that can really help and add to the Steelers season and I hope it does. <laughs> I fun certainly fact. hope it does too. So Chris, I have a fun fact about Big Ben if we can say it. Okay, go for it. Time. So in the third uh, Dark uh, Dark Knight movie in like the third trilogy with like Bane. Um, there's a scene where Big Ben is actually in it. He's on the football team. He's on the sidelines. So just got to look out for that. Because I'm pretty sure it was filmed in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Learn something new every day. This is you what do. I'm here for, Matthew. You know, <laughs> It's what you missed. So the NFL and the NBA aren't the only ones getting ready to start and having started. You know, the NHL is back. My St. Louis Blues are still at the top despite losing two games in the the two-city bubble they have. So have you guys been watching the NHL? All right. Listen, I I, I I haven't watched any games. I've also been away. Um, But I do keep keep track of what, like, the Panthers are doing. It's like a win here, mostly losses. But I don't really care about anyone right now, okay, to be honest with you. No, listen, listen, listen. I'm excited for the Seahawks, the, the, not the Seahawks, the Seattle team. 
I'm very excited for that. I like the logo. I like the jersey. I'm very excited for it. What is it? The Krakens, right? The Seattle Kraken. That, that's a great name. Um, Seattle deserves another um, pro sports team. I think, personally, I think there should be another basketball team in Seattle. Just saying. But, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... I'm not uh... I don't follow the NHL like I do with um, the, N the MLB, the N uh, NFL, and the uh, NBA. But um, I do see stuff about it here and there, and I keep up with it. And I have to agree, the Seattle Kraken have really, I think, have piqued my interest a little bit. I kind of want to watch the, the NHL a little bit more and get into it. I'm excited Dude, to see imagine, what that team does. Imagine the Seattle Krakens versus the, versus the um, Vegas Knights. Like Those are the two coolest jerseys and logos in the NHL right now. Like, Boom. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they put together. I mean, uh, as far as the Florida Panthers, I mean, I, I, there's not much to say here. <laughs> yeah. I, I lost interest as soon as they changed their logo. Yeah, in Seattle, I'm certainly waiting for for the whole team to come out. And you, you can already tell they're going to release the Kraken. Like, that's got to oh, be the sure. phrase they're going to use. So, next up, we got something new. So, I, want you, I got a topic for you guys, and I want you to debate it together. And whoever I think does the best job convincing me of their point is going to get to rank something. You know, that's the part everyone looks forward to in our show is our end of show ranking. So it's up for grabs this time. So the topic I got for you is, so multiple players have been going off in the NBA bubble. I mean, TJ Warren scored 50-plus. Devin Booker's hitting game-winning shots. The Suns are 4-0. Anthony Davis has been putting on a, putting on a show. So, so who do you guys think... Strictly based on the NBA bubble in these games is the bubble MVP. Go on, Matthew. Go. Matthew, since since I've gone first, I think it's I think it's only fair if you go first. All right, no problem. Well, um, I'm still gonna go with Giannis Antetokounmpo. The guy is an absolute freak, and he continues to put up the stats night in and night out. And this has been from the bubble. This has been all season, and. You don't even hear too much about it anymore because it's kind of just expected at this point. He's kind of in that stage that LeBron was in a few years ago where you're just expecting the guy to go off. And although LeBron is still having quite a few uh, great games, um, and uh, especially uh, with, a, with a great surrounding cast, Giannis is doing it without as strong of a cast. And I think that makes him a very great candidate. Um, but like you said, TJ Warren has really stepped up in the NBA bubble. Devin Booker has really stepped up in the NBA bubble. And even Anthony Davis, which is kind of expected. But I got to say, I'm more surprised at TJ Warren. The man has been balling. And I think, I think TJ Warren, like throwing skills that he is right now, can be really beneficial for the Pacers in the long run in the postseason. I think it adds them another scorer. And um, I think he's really proven himself right now. All right. Um, so right now I have two that I think this may, this may make me lose the debate right here because I have two, but the first guy I'm going to talk about right now is Devin Booker. The man has gone so well. And for the, for the Suns to be from where they were to where they are now and for him to lead that team, especially with a game winning bucket, like, come on, Devin Booker has been leading the Suns. What are they? Five and one since this whole thing started or Five and one or something like that, like four it's ridiculous. Four and one or whatever, it's four ridiculous. And they four and lost. sorry, four and zero, oh, even better. Like Devin Booker has been leading the Suns team and they're doing a great job. But here's the second person that I think it may be a step above Devin Booker that no one really talks about. Dame Time, the man dropped 53 points last night with 11 threes, and I don't think he's gone anywhere below 35 points since the bubble has started. Um, I think Damian Lillard is a great leader for the Blazers. I think he's the best chance for them to um, uh, go higher in a very, very tough Western Conference team. Uh, Western Conference, excuse me. And you, you can pose the point of Giannis, LeBron, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard. But right now, those are all expected, like Schwamm said. We're looking for people who... who you wouldn't be surprised to do well like uh, TJ Warren and um, Devin Booker, but I still think um, Damian Lillard right now is the bubble MVP because he's leading right now uh, one of the top scorers, assists, three-point maker making. I just think right now he's the best player in the bubble. Schwam, you got a rebuttal to that? 
No, I mean, I agree with it all. You know, Devin Booker really has been balling. The Suns, we've known this. The Suns, they, yeah, although the record didn't show it in the regular season, the Suns were, like, they've gotten more competitive. And um, they have a nice young core there with DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker, um, with a, is a beautiful duo. And I think the Suns are going to do great things coming in the future. And I, I agree with all those points. Devin Booker has for sure been balling. He's been taking on the reins a little bit more. You can see him being a little bit more of a leader. And... Um, we, we've always known Devin Booker had this skill. So now that we're finally seeing it blossom into more consecutive games and watching him lead a 4-0 Suns team since the bubble started is something really special to see. And I think they're, they're an up-and-coming team. One of the coolest edits that I saw on Instagram after Devin Booker made that uh, game-winning shot was him laying on the back, on his back, looking at the shot go in. And you see like a faded like um, Kobe Bryant picking him up. And they asked him a question about that, like is like, how does it like, is like Kobe with you? And and um, Devin Booker responded, he's always with me. That's why I ride on my um, shoes to uh, something like uh, be legendary, because it's like it's an um, it's an awe to him. It's an awe to Kobe. So I think that's even more special. Yeah, a lot of the players you mentioned are all on teams that are fighting for that eighth spot in the Western Conference. So they're certainly fighting for something. So I think the winner of this one, I am going to go with Ethan because I think Devin Booker has has certainly shown up. And that Suns team that everyone was clowning on about, why are they here? They suck. They're not good. Devin they're Booker's been balling everyone. out. And actually, since Devin Booker came into the league, him and LeBron have the most game-winning shots. They're tied. And when you put into account that Devin Booker has never been to the playoffs, that's certainly an amazing feat. So, Ethan, so what are you going to rank for us? Please bless us with your ranking. Who do you think is best best fit to get that eighth spot in the West? How about okay. that Okay, all right, that's fine. Eighth spot in okay. the West. I'm looking right here, guys. Don't worry. I got it right here. All right. Hmm. Right now, I think it could go to... Either Portland or the Suns. With the way the Suns are going, um, I think they're they're only two games behind Memphis and Portland. They're two wins behind Pe Memphis and Portland. Um, but I think right now with Portland's experience in the playoffs and, and the caliber of, of um, Damian Lillard and that Portland team, I think they have the best chance of making it into the eighth seed. So... I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Portland, Phoenix, Memphis, New Orleans. I think they're going to surprise you in the second half, in the back half of this uh, regular season. Um, San Antonio and Sacramento. Yeah, I haven't really heard too much from Sacramento at all, so I would kind of keep them down there as well. I don't think they're, I don't think they're the same since De'Aaron Fox cut his hair. <laughs> yeah, not the best decision he's ever made. But yeah, so the Trailblazers and the Suns have de definitely come roaring back. Um, the Pelicans have kind of suffered a little bit, but they're still within striking range. Um, so I definitely agree with your rankings there. The Grizzlies have yet to win a game in the bubble, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So I'm a bit concerned for John Moran and the Grizzlies. But, uh, Schwam, what do you think? Well, um, yeah, I think um, the Memphis Grizzlies do hold that eighth spot right now, and I think that's already saying a statement. John Moran has done a great job um, this season he's coming in as a rookie and you already see this guy as an emerging leader um he's putting up stats night in and night out i know he struggled a little bit in the bubble um not putting up the stats that he was in the regular season but he's still doing pretty decent and i think memphis still has a chance they can pick it up and kind of separate themselves but i don't think they i, I think they're still too young i think the blazers are going to come and sneak up and take that eighth spot they have playoff experience they know what they need to do in the second half of this bubble um and, you know, Damian Lillard is just an insane player. He does, he, I don't think he's talked about enough. I think Damian Lillard is really going to step up here, and um, he's already stepped up in the bubble. I think he's going to pick up his game even more, and I think he's going to take this team to an eighth spot. Um, so with that being said, my rankings would have to be, I think Blazers are going to take that eighth seed. Right behind them is the Suns and then the Grizzlies. I think, actually, it's going to be a fight, a little, a little bit of a toss-up, actually, for me, between the Grizzlies and the Pelicans because... Um, I know the Pelicans have struggled here a little bit in the in the bubble, but they really do have some talent there, and um, I hope they they find themselves again because back in the regular season they were clicking pretty well. So 
hopefully they find themselves again, make themselves more competitive. And I want to see a fight to that eighth spot. It, it makes basketball that much more exciting. Yeah, with the Pelicans limiting Zion's minutes, I am a bit concerned for them. Um, but yeah, certainly a toss-up. Lots of things to look forward to with this eighth spot. That's all we got for you this week. Um, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.